what's going on guys today we're back inside of diablo immortal and i want to say we have our first update this literally just dropped i'm going to be looking through it with you guys for the first time now i did hear some things that were coming so let's talk about what we know and how it relates to what we're reading right here diablo immortal's first post launch content update from july 6 2022 the first of many updates that we're going to receive from blizzard which is nice they've said multiple times that this is going to be a game that is regularly updated i mean we're going to be getting the battle pass updates monthly and probably another content patch every single month so i think it's safe to say that we can expect two updates per month one of them is just going to be you know balance changes and battle pass related stuff that we're going to talk about today and others maybe larger things coming to the game so let's see uh, since taking your first steps into Diablo Immortal, adventurers have vanquished countless demons, loosened the hold of the burning hells over Sanctuary, and tracked down, tracked down fragments of the scattered world stone. So today they're going to be telling us what's coming, what's changing. What is this image up top? It's something new that we don't know, we haven't seen before, but we will learn. So let's keep on looking through here. Now, notice they say right by that link the team is constantly monitoring your feedback and excited to introduce multiple bug fixes in today's current update we have a blog dedicated to the pc thing which we will look as well for any of you that are playing on pc i get the feeling it's a bunch of you guys and they talk about heliquary bosses in-game events um, expansions and more so let's go through the codex what are we going to see in this video the Season 2 Battle Pass. What's it going to look like? How long is it going to last? What's it going to cost? Etc. The new Heliquary boss, Vatath the Shivering Death. We've seen her already. She dropped inside of the game. I believe it was yesterday. Hungering Moon Weekend Event. What is this? What will it give us? What will it be about? Let's all find out. What's to come? Balance changes and, of course, the bug fixes. So here we go looking at the Season 2 Battle Pass Blood Swarm, which is essentially the Countess, right? Now... The Battle Pass, remember, the top tier of the Battle Pass is completely free, and you get re rewards along the way. The bottom tier, you could spend, I believe it was $5 or $15 for it. $5 gets you the Battle Pass, everything on the bottom tier for free, and you get the cosmetics. And if you were to get the $15 pass, it progresses you an extra 10 levels right away. So you get all the rewards in the bottom row more quickly. And it gives you some extra cosmetics like a teleport. And I think that's it. Season one, I got the $15 battle pass. Season two, and what I would recommend is just, unless if you really love the portal or the frame that you get, because you get a, a frame around your, your face, you know, for your icon. If you love those, then you could spend the 15. But if you just think they're okay, $5 is sufficient. That's really, in my opinion, all that you need. That's what I'm going to be doing. So, um... The devotees of the Countess the Bloodsworn have risen up in revolt through the Dark Wood. A new battle pass devoted to the Bloodsworn's valor has arrived, and within it, Season 2 begins on July 7th at 3 a.m. server time. The Bloodsworn battle pass is host of 40 ranks worth of challenges and rewards, such as gems, crests, hilts, and more. Scoria! Remember, Scoria is a big one. We need that because we need to do the Heliquary. We need Scoria. We need to get as much Scoria as we can. That's probably the biggest thing besides the cosmetics that you get on the bottom tier is the Scoria. It's going to allow you to just upgrade your Heliquary, and that's important. Um, honestly, that's the main reason why I'm going to be doing it, so I could upgrade that. And for 5 bucks a month, the value is incredible. Other values inside of the game, not as incredible. But this is the one, the one thing that I would say if you're going to spend be a light spender just get the battle pass and that's it um so really cool that that's coming back and it tells us sometimes here it's going to last until august 4th so it's the 6th right now i believe it, it's gonna be popping open in, uh, in a few hours or probably i think it's tomorrow by 3 a.m um july 7th 3 a.m yes so it's it's like 28 days of battle pass the first battle pass was quite a bit longer this one is 28 days remember though if you progress your battle pass until the end you are still able to collect more rewards after that within form of the chest so it's it's still worth progressing plus you also are getting the um, you're getting the bonus the xp bonus now we have seen vatath the shivering of death she is difficult okay now remember not everyone can battle her and that's something that a lot of people were upset about. Not everyone could just dive on in 
and get into the battle you need to be a combat rating of 2000 plus at least the person that's starting the raid I was below, I was able to join a raid that was up to 2000. I think I was like 17 and change combat rating and it was a hard battle. Harder than LaSalle. The artwork though, oh my God, I wish I had this. I wish I had this for like a thumbnail that I was making when I was doing those videos. Cause man, this artwork is sick. Blizzard never lets us down on how the artwork comes through. Let me know in the comment section below, have you battled her yet or not? If you did, did you win? That's the question. Remember, you're going to be doing these so that you can get the Scoria and so you can get all the upgrades to further your progression, get stronger inside of the game. And over time, I'm anticipating every month a new Heliquary boss, but your combat rating is going to be, have to be higher. So you're going to have to always progress your combat rating. I think it was 1600 for level two of, um, of our first Heliquary boss. And it was 2000 for her for level one so who knows how the progression is going to go hopefully not too much because i want to be able to do all of them uh you know all the time so we know about her now what is this hungering moon weekend event i don't know much about this so we're going to read this together it looks like we have a uh, kind of a nomad right here it looks wizardy as well the moon is hungry and it demands blood perhaps even yours you adventurer gaze upon the moon by the way we are not adventurers we are the immortals okay just kidding oh no we are but i'm not arrogant like that i could care less if we're immortals or shadows or adventurers i just enjoy the game bask in the hollowed glow heed in the howl of sustenance and lunar laced blessings you shall be bestowed by the way whoever writes this stuff is very very good very good writer fulfilling the moon's demands will earn you moon slivers which can be traded for blessings those are important that's why they're bolded after acquiring seven blessings you'll have curried enough goodwill with the moon to trade these in a random for a random reward what are these rewards going to be can it be legendary crests rare crests scoria just hilts who knows what we're gonna be able to get here offer enough blessings to the moon it will even present you with its favor we welcome brave adventurers to lend their hand in satiating the moon's hunger from July 15th. So we're looking at nine days from now at 3 a.m. until July 18th. This is really cool. Now, let me compare this to events in other games I've played, like uh, Rise of Kingdoms and war games like that. There's always events that go on inside of the game that are going to allow you to get rewards for participating in that event. I don't know what the event's going to be like. Is it going to be a specific dungeon or is it going to be a, a some type of a temporary realm that pops up that we could do this in? I honestly don't know, but I like it. We can get more rewards, do a different activity. If these types of things come every month and the new Heliquary every month and the regular updates, who knows what other updates are going to be coming, maybe more PVP in the future. It's just a cool thing. So, so far for an update that is really just about the battle pass and balance changes, we've gotten a new Heliquary boss announced right here. And of course the Hungering Moon event as well, which is a lot of fun. And I also like that it's being done over the weekend for a lot of those players that are busy with work and can't participate in things during the week. So what is to come? Blizzard and the Immortal team would like to thank you for your sp time spent in Sanctuary. The patch is just a start. We've been collecting suggestions and feedback from the game since launch and look forward to sharing more updates and future patches. While we don't want to ent entirely spoil the fun, we will leave you with this. Class change. Yes, they are talking about that alongside other additional new content. More new stuff this month is coming your way up in the update later this month. All right. So class change system said that it's coming later this month. That's awesome. I'll tell you what, I've been playing a barbarian for a month. Would I want to change? Kinda? Kinda not? I don't know. I don't know how the mechanics of that are gonna look yet. We're gonna find out though probably with that next update and I'll be bringing you that information. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell if you wanna know exactly what's to come and any information that I may have on that. All right, balance changes. It looks like, cause I, I scrolled through this really quickly. The wizard and the monk are getting buffs. That's what it looks like to me. If we take a look right here, the wizard is Arcane Wind, Arcane Wind Legendary, and Night Lightning Nova without going through all of the details. They're all getting increases to those in damage and range. So wizard getting stronger. Monk, everything from Exploding Palm, Exploding Palm Legendary, Scolding Storm, and Exploding Palm Legendary, Path of the Present, and Reaching Rebuke. They are all getting buffs. Everything is getting more damage. 
So damage is being increased. Ranges are being changed. Uh, looks like increased as well. So if you're a monk or if you're a wizard, uh, you should be pretty happy because your class that you chose is getting stronger. Now, I would say these two classes are two of the less popular of them. I say Demon Hunter is pretty popular for range. And uh, Necromancer, we know, is the most popular. Well, that's range as well, but hybrid. So yeah, I would say Monk is not one of the most popular, although it is one of the best. Bug fixes. Uh, okay, we, they take us to the PC page, which we will go to in a moment for any PC-related fixes, which, which is important to me too, because I do play on PC specifically when I'm recording videos and stuff. When I play for fun, I play on my phone. When I play... For content, I play my PC, and I don't love how the PC works, so we'll look at that soon. All right, so we have right here, gameplay, adjusted monster spawn logic to reduce the effectiveness and stand in one place in Zoltan Cool. They're talking about right now the spooning that we spoke of. Now, it's worth me noting, this is important right here, guys. This is important, so we're going to go right here. People are being permabanned. People are being banned for 60 years inside of Diablo Immortal for the spooning, all right? The AI is picking up that people are doing this AFK type farming inside of the game. Whether it gets you annoyed or not, whether you think Blizzard is being petty by, by banning people for this or not, it's happening. Don't lose your account because you dropped your spoon on your phone. Don't do it. It's silly. The reward you get for it is little. They're also making some changes, I believe, to make it less effective for people that are doing it. But, I mean... If you spend money inside of the game, let's say you spent a hundred bucks. If you get banned, you can't take that anywhere. You're going to get banned and lose that. Don't do it for some extra gold and stuff because you want to try and, you know, gain on the system. Whether you're upset about monetization in the game or not, that's not the way to get back at it. Because really, it's like trying to beat the teacher in class. The teacher always wins because they'll send you the principal and the principal always wins. You just you just can't beat it. So don't try to. I don't want anyone losing their account. I don't want anyone losing their money that was affiliated or associated with the account or not even that. The time they've spent associated with it. So please, let's not uh, let's not get caught up in that, guys. Uh, there's some developers notes, which I'll read out here. The previous two changes were made to remove the reward of repeating a small rotation of attacks while standing in one place, such as the behavior of some common botting or spooning. Adjusted the auto target and how it's going to work over a sustained duration. Updated the ability of the chip and stone flesh each time you choose an enemy, you cause an enemy's loss of control to each time you cause an enemy total loss of control to clarify the effects and cause of the gem. And developer's note kind of breaks it down a little bit easier here. The gem's explosive effect is only triggered by total loss of control. Effects such as stun and fear. Not all crowd control effects such as slow and chill. Now we have a bunch more things here. Um, I'm not going to sit here and read through all of them. I will scan through them and see if there's any that I think are worthy of talking about right here. Um, essentially, people weren't getting rewards in some places or they were getting some bugs. There were, from what I heard, hundreds of fixes that were done just to how it all worked, how everything ran, issues people were having. And this is a good sign. The support is here. Blizzard is giving 100% support for the success of this game. Are they making the changes that you want to the game? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But they are here trying to improve the game, at least from that element of it running smoothly and going well. And to be honest with you, it's been pretty good. For a game with 10 million downloads on week one, for the amount of issues they had, technical issues, it wasn't that bad at all. I didn't see really anything. We have a developer's note. Players have expressed the frustration about how XP globes are currently dropping in game and they would fly in random directions all over. Uh, they are doing it so that they're gonna drop closer. Now, the funny thing is I was just playing this morning and um, I killed, I, I got my XP pool where it said EXP over my head and I killed some things and no globes came out at all. So I was like, hmm, did they make an update to change it so that you don't get globes, but you get the gain of XP? Maybe the globes jumped, dropped right on top of me. Right after attacking those bosses, it did, um, they did start popping out again, but I did notice a difference there. We have changes coming to the cycle of strife about how shadow contracts work. A mortal overthrow buff will now clear upon entering a challenge rift. Um, a lot of things are changing here. For the cycle of strife you can read through them again if you you could pause the video right here and read or i'll be linking this blog post in the description of the video 
adjustments to battlegrounds the preparation ui so that players have properly randomized between attack and defense previously players could determine if they were attacking or defending based on this ui they just fixed a couple of issues there as well there's a lot more to fix with battlegrounds and just some ui issues but that's for another video we have some npc updates some ui updates as well um really small things but cleaning up the things that are going to make it a nice experience for everyone you don't want to run into bugs in the game one time i was at where was i, I was at my warband and the exit warband option was not there i could not get out of it even after continuously swiping out of the game reloading it eventually it worked but you know those types of things are being fixed which is great i i love that um we have some visual effects as well and server fixed an issue where players get stuck connecting to the battle net when interacting with the ULA. So it's nice that that's gonna be fixed as well. But I did mention there were some things coming to the PC that were changed as well. We have that right here. And the main thing that I wanted to mention about the patch notes for the PVP, I mean, not for the PVP, for the PC are the controller, right? I use this one. Mobile Gaming Corpse controller. Great controller, plug in, works great. You can map buttons, has things here. By the way, uh, if you get anything from Mobile Gaming Corps, whether it's a controller, accessories, or even the thumb pads that I use, claw socks, where are they? Here they are. Use these, they're great for when your fingers are on the glass. You save 10% if you use code echo on any of this stuff. Uh, self promo, I guess, but whatever. I was getting lag with the controller. That's my point of all this. And it was just a little bit slow to actually do the attack I wanted to do. And that was frustrating. I didn't want that to happen anymore. It says that they fixed an issue that caused Xbox controls to have input delay. This is what I'm talking about. Did it fix it on my controller? I don't know. We're going to have to test that out. Uh, they had a few other things as well. They have some hot fixes as well. And they have some PC known issues as well. So it looks like they're on top of this also. They just wanted to give us that information. But I mean, the big time story right here, in my opinion, I think the biggest thing, the most exciting thing besides the new Heliquary, because that's, that's already old news, which is crazy. It just happened a day ago, but is this hungering moon weekend event. I can't wait to see what it's all about. Hope you guys have been enjoying the Diablo Immortal as a whole. Let me know if you're still playing or if you decide it's not a game for you in the comments section below. If you want to see more updates on what's happening, things that I know, playthroughs, guides, and such, well, you know where to be. It's right here. Guys, let me know your thoughts on this update in the comment section below, and I'll be back here tomorrow with another video. Have a great day and be good.